Today in Berlin. I would either go for a run or spend an hour trying to learn German. I try to venture into the other neighborhoods. I somehow always end up back in the Mower Park flea market. I bike around to different places in the city and then go to class at 1 p.m. Berlin embodies a lot of the things San Francisco strives for, especially in regards to finding your niche. Everyone's doing their own thing, and people are very laid back. They're living their lives in a very meaningful way. People have the time and take the time to make mistakes, to experiment, but at the same time, they have a goal. This is the old world. It has a much longer history than San Francisco. But more importantly, I think for our students, it's a shift in their education. We have 120 sophomores here in Berlin. We have four colleges in arts and sciences and a business college. Students can take classes ranging from arts and society to computational and mathematical modeling. In Berlin, they're starting to explore their own deep topic they thought they wanted to study. We are trying to bridge curriculum and the city. We try to get students immersed in experiential learning. We're facing students with reality versus the models that they are learning. We want to build that bridge from where they are to the next place. So it was a very different chemical composition. First year cornerstone courses at Minerva really gave us a good foundation to understand uh, deeper knowledge. I can sense that I think differently. What Minerva's changed the most is my own definition of success. I'm more willing to take a stab at things and be open to the possibility that I might fail. I've always been a rebel. I've always wanted to do something that was different. Minerva definitely opens up the possibilities. I start thinking more about what I really want instead of just following the path that other people follow. There's something very special about Minerva students. They're not just smart, they're very curious about the world. They are really confident in who they are and what their quirks are and excited about what their futures hold. To see people encouraging each other to be more of that is really powerful. So we made some really good dishes that you guys are, I think, are going to enjoy very much. I spent two hours on the salad just letting you know. <laughs> In Berlin, we are able to build towards a more important challenge. This is the place where the energy comes from that allows them to explore and push their boundaries. There are infinite directions that you can create. I can't imagine what it'll be like when I'm in Seoul or when I'm in uh, London. There's so much in the world to do and so much thing to see. Um, hello, my name is John Lee. Currently, I'm a student at EU High School. I think you know. Um, I skipped today's class just to see you here and listen to your speech. But unfortunately, on the other side, side of myself, I felt kind of frustrated while listening to your speech um, because not all, the, not all the students get the chance to experience Minerva style education. And I just want to ask that what kind of problem that in education and can it also be the solution to end the highly competitive society of Korean education? I understand, I, I hope you understand my question. Yeah. And, Look forward to discuss it together. Thank you. Yeah, look, it, it's, an, it's an excellent point, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll address it in, in two separate ways. Um, first and foremost, about the, just the practical nature of the admissions process. One of the things which was crucial for uh, when we set up the institution of Minerva is that we approached admissions in a very different perspective. And so admissions to practically every other, not practically, every single other sele highly selective university in the world is exactly as you've described. You have to compete with all of these other people trying to look better than them on a comparative basis. 
Um, we do not have that concept at Minerva. Minerva has no uh, concept of spots in the class. We, accept, in fact, accept 100% of qualified students. And we have no balancing of any kind. So we don't have a quota for men versus women. We don't have a quota for Americans versus Koreans. We don't have a quota for uh, rich versus poor, etc. And so what happens, because we admit purely based on merit, is that the Minerva student body is by far the most diverse student body in the world. Um, less than 20% of our students are from the United States, even though we're an American university. We have students that are far more representative of the socioeconomic distribution in the world than any other elite university in America, primarily because universities in the United States discriminate, even though they claim they don't. They, statistically, you can prove that they do. Um, and so when you think about the entry process, application process into Minerva, um, you are evaluated purely against absolute standards. Now, the standards are extremely high, but... It, you are not at a disadvantage or an advantage from when uh, uh, of competing with particular students from your school. So as an example, um, I think uh, two years ago, there was one school in China where we admitted six students from that one school the same year when we admitted one student from all of greater Beijing, right? And so... It's, it's, it has nothing to do with anything except the merit of the individual. Um, now, that is still can't solve all of the problems of, of global higher education. But what Minerva is, is meant to do as an institution, more importantly than educating students directly, is to demonstrate to every other university that their educational process is just unacceptable. It is not acceptable for the world's great universities to have such lower outcomes than a brand new institution. It doesn't make any sense. And so we exist first and foremost to inspire other institutions to reform. And my bet is that in societies like Korea, you're going to have that reform happen much faster than in societies that are less focused on education. I think the culture of education in Korea is so strong uh, and I think one of the reasons why we chose Seoul as one of the cities that uh, that we're visiting or that we, we're resident in is that I, I think our entire model and the results speak for themselves and will be adapted in places like Korea much faster than some other countries in the world. Thank you very much. Any other question? Thank you very much. 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 그래서 질문은 미네르바 대학을 그렇게 성공적으로 이끌기 위해서 어떤 거를 어떻게 넘었는지 그런 거에 대한 어떤 어, 인사이트를 주신다면 대단히 감사하겠습니다. 저는 방송통신대학교에서 온 손진권입니다. Yes, that, that's um, uh, actually I didn't talk about that at all, but it's a great question. Um, the, the secret to Minerva's success is not that we just created a better educational system, on the one hand, we created a better service, better product. But actually, on the other hand, the, we also played the game. We did what every other university does, and we did it better. And so, as an example, in the United States, um, to be an accredited degree, to actually offer an accredited four-year degree, you have to offer 
uh, 120 credit units worth of time. There's a seat time requirement. Now, we as a new institution, uh, a new program could say, oh, you know, 120 is, doesn't make sense. It should be 108. It should be 150. It should be 87. But we didn't fight those fights because it doesn't matter. 120 is a container. And you say, okay, well, I'll, uh, you want me to be 120 credit units? I'll be 120 credit units. And I'll fit within that concept, right? Um, a lot of uh, um, um, uh, the prestige that comes from American universities comes from uh, the acceptance rate, which is kind of a silly uh, a concept and all the rest. And so we had to make sure that we got a lot of applicants from all over the world. So as an example, from uh, in our third class that we just uh, is just starting in San Francisco this week, um, we received for a third class ever. 20,400 applicants from 179 different countries. So that means that we received for a third class more applications than Dartmouth, which is a 250-year-old Ivy League university, or MIT this year. Right? And we accepted less than 2% of those individuals. Right? We are the most selective university in the United States. Now again, we accept all qualified applicants. Right? 100%. But we have so much demand, so much interest, that we are able to maintain very, very high standards, right? And make sure that the ones we select are befitting of, of that perspective. And so we play the same game that other universities do, and we make sure that when we offer our degrees, they are the same number of credit hours, you can do the same majors, or it's a Bachelor of Art or a Bachelor of Science, depending on what you major in. It's four years, it's accredited. We're part of the Claremont system, uh, where Pomona and Claremont McKenna and Harvey Mudd are. And so we have all of the, uh, the basics that make sure that we look and are as legitimate as any other institution, and then we have the curriculum and the pedagogy to ensure that we do a better job. And so the problem with most educational reform movements in the past is that they rejected the system. And then they jumped up and down, said, look at me, look at me, I'm outside the system, bring the system down. And we don't do that. We say, we think the system should survive, we think it should thrive, and we will show you how you can change inside the system looks exactly the same, but have much better outcomes. And that's, the I think, why we hope that this reform movement will be successful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is not giving students the ability to apply what they've learned useful ways of teaching, useful knowledge, practical knowledge, is to actually allow students to apply in real-world situations. We approach education through a system that we refer to as fully active learning. You foreground the habit or concept as opposed to the subject. How do you teach generalizable practical knowledge? Well, the answer is very straightforward. <laughs>